Hey folks, Eric the Old Jarhead here. I'm gonna make some free lumber today. <laughs> you know, nothing's free. However, if you've got some logs like I do that have been sitting around a while, you cut them down to thin out the forest or to clear the way in front of your solar panels or for whatever reason you may have cut them down. And in this case, they've been sitting around a while. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with them. And being a sawyer that runs around and mills logs into lumber for other people, I don't always get a chance to do it for myself. So sometimes these logs sit around too long. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take these old logs. You know, they're, they're not punky yet. They're, they're blue stained. They're still hard enough to make some decent lumber out of. So we're gonna go ahead and take these and turn them into one buys. And I can use them for just about anything. I've always got to use for one inch stuff. You know, you just never know. Maybe it's gonna be turned into paneling. Who knows, I can find a use for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mill it up. And frankly, it's really free to me. I'm just up at the cabin enjoying myself and getting a bit of milling done. And while I'm primarily up here to mill D logs for the cabin edition, I've got these old logs and I'm just gonna turn them into some one buys stack and stick them up nice let them dry and and you know i'll be able to use them forever so that's the goal just take these old logs turn them into lumber it's really free to me otherwise i'd have burned them in the wood stove if i wasn't going to use them for something else and boy with lumber prices the way they are today i hate burning anything frankly so you know ponderosa pine's not the greatest thing to burn in the wood stove anyway but when you got tons of it as long as you clean that chimney out every few months you know you don't get too bad a creosote build up and it definitely works to heat the cabin in the winter, so no complaints there. But you know, when you've got eight, nine, 10 inch logs, stuff that you wouldn't normally think about as a saw log. You know, I often tell customers saw logs are really, you know, nine inches is the bottom end. And even then it's, uh, if it's what you got, it's what you got, but you can only get about three two by sixes out of a nine inch diameter log. So what are you gonna do? Well, we're gonna take these uh, small logs turn them into blue stain one inch pine boards and uh, we'll use them for something and again this is just free for me you know uh, it's just a good day out making sawdust and enjoying the property you know at, at three plus dollars a board foot at the big box stores who can blame me for taking these old logs that are you know the bark's falling off of them they look like crap frankly but you know what they're going to make some really nice blue stain pine and I'll use that to do some siding or make boxes or cabinets or who knows we'll we'll use it for something i suppose in the end i could sell them and make a few bucks that way too but i really don't need to and i've always got to use for one inch stuff One of the things that uh, you'll see me doing in this video, and you've seen me doing it a lot in other videos probably, is going down to the center of the log before I cut that first cap cut. I'll run the saw head down to the center of the log, drop the band on the log, check the height, pick it up, drop it back, and drop it an inch or an inch and a half below that, depending on the log size. You know, these logs, I was kind of dropping it about an inch. It gives me a decent opening face. I do tend to mill as much as I can out of a log. So sometimes, you know, when I do this, I get pretty thin cap cuts, but um, you know, even if I get something that's just a one by three in the end, I'm okay with that. And I can edge them either on the table saw or on the sawmill later, but I just go ahead and run the saw head down to the center of the log, drop her on there, lift her up, come back, drop her an inch and let her rip. 
you can really see in this log, you know, there's definitely some, some blue stain in there, but it's still hard enough to make good lumber. And, you know, you really shouldn't leave logs down that long before you mill them. I always tell everybody, it'd be better if I could just fall it right down onto the mill and mill it straight up, drip and wet with sap. Mills better that way, dries better that way, easier on the band. I don't, uh, you know, you don't dull the band too fast. You know, sometimes people ask if they should dry their logs first, and I always tell them, oh, no, please don't. And seal them with some anchor seal and get me out there as soon as you can because that's the best scenario. And I've actually milled some pretty dry logs. I milled about 40,000 board feet of lumber for a customer, and all the logs were oversized logs from a plywood mill. They couldn't mill anything 24 inches or bigger. So they sold, uh, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe 150 logs to the guy for a thousand bucks or something like that. It was a heck of a good deal for him. And uh, every single log was 24 inches at the small end or bigger. The problem with those logs is they were so dry that I was running a band. I was dulling a band on almost every log. Now, I was getting about 500 board feet an hour when milling those logs because almost every log was 500 plus board feet they were all about 18 feet long so it was kind of fun to, to really just crank that out like that and, and really push the mill to the max I had a great crew they had heavy equipment all that kind of stuff and that's the only way you're going to get that high board foot rate but with these small logs you know you're talking 40 50 board feet maybe a log you don't get a lot of yield out of them so it's not really pushing this LT40 hydraulic that way you know, you, you could almost pick these logs up and put them on the deck by hand, frankly. You can roll them with a cant hook just as easily as you can with the hydraulics. Heck, sometimes the, the small log right cant hook faster than the hydraulics on a small log like this. But it's good exercise, good training. Uh, you know, it's always nice to get out before my season gets really busy and work some bugs out uh, on the mill at, at my property. Hopefully I'll be able to get out there again soon and crank out some more of these and, and get rid of all the small stuff I have so I can get serious about making D-logs. And I didn't get this entire stack of logs milled up, but I sure got close. But that's it, you know, taking uh, old logs that have been down too long and turning them into free lumber. Nothing beats that. I love doing it. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, don't forget to put them in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoy what you see, hit that notification bell, too. That will remind you whenever a new video comes out. And I'm committed right now to put out a lot of videos. I've quit my job, and I'm just going to run my sawmill and be semi-retired. So thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate every one of you. You all have a great day. The old Jarhead out.